friends welcome again to the brilliancy point today we are going to learn the last and the most insightful story of class 12th echoes which is b wordsworth written by v s napoleon so before starting the story i would just like to say one thing that this story is very inferential it means that uh, you won't find uh, the story as you read it means it doesn't have a lot of surface meanings but it has a lot of underlying meanings and you need to empathize with the characters in the story there are just two characters this story is written in first person so one character is the author himself and in this story the author is assuming a role of a young boy and the another character in the story is b wordsworth so a very interesting story and it it is actually a very short story and um, as my previous video i won't read the story line by line but i will explain you every line in the story so with this let us begin the story so this story also begins uh, by describing the setting so the setting of the story is miguel street the story is set in miguel street which is uh, in the port of spain in an island uh, called trinidad so the author begins by saying uh, by describing the regular scenario of miguel street he says that uh, three beggars they come regularly uh, in miguel street in the neighborhood of miguel street and they ask for certain things like uh, at 10 am every day um, a man comes in dhoti and white jacket and he asks for a tin of rice okay then at 12 a lady comes who smokes a pipe and uh, she asks for a cent and she gets it then at uh, then at 2 uh, a blind man comes and he asks for pen so this is the regular uh, scenario uh, of miguel street and the author also says that sometimes a rouge comes r o u g e a rouge means a person who is a pretender means a person who is not a regular beggar but he pretends to be a beggar so such people uh, such person also comes and he first he says that he is hungry and he asks for food and then he asks for a cigarette and then he doesn't leave the place until he gets his cigarette lit so this is the scenario of miguel street and then um, the author says that one day the strangest beggar came okay and this strangest beggar is b wordsworth okay and this strangest beggar that is b wordsworth he came in a white shirt and a black trouser and what does he ask for he is the strangest uh, beggar because he doesn't ask for a penny or for any materialistic thing he just says that uh, sony uh, can i come into your yard so sony is a reference for the boy means the writer and he says that can i come into your yard and uh, he says that he wants to watch bees so um, the boy he asks his mother that mom uh, a man is asking that he wants to watch the bees so can i uh, allow him inside so um, the mother was a little surprised by the request of the beggar but then she says that okay allow him but you watch him while he is watching the bees and uh, so uh, b wordsworth uh, he says okay uh, thank you madam you have done a very good deed today and here the author says that uh, b wordsworth he was very uh, good at english means he spoke very slowly but he spoke very correctly means the syntax of his uh, sentences um, the way he spoke it was very uh, grammatically very correct and he spoke english very well and uh, that was quite surprising for uh, him as well as his mother and he also says that his english didn't seem as if it was natural now natural means uh, what we speak in day to day conversation like uh, we speak naturally in our day to day conversation but our day to day conversations the language that we speak it is not that proper okay it is we use slangs and all of that so um, the author is trying to say that um we words were english didn't contain any slangs but it was little formal and it was very proper um so um 
since uh, bee wordsworth he was allowed to watch the bees in uh, in the boys yard so he sits and the boy sits along with him and both of them they watch bees for about an hour okay and um, then a uh, bee wordsworth he asks the boy that uh, i like watching bees so do you also watch bees and then the boy says that no i don't have the time so um uh, bee wordsworth says that oh you don't have time but watching is what i do i can watch bees i can watch ants for days i can watch any insects any animals like scorpions and he gives a uh, he give, he names a little uh, a few more uh, insects and he says that i can watch these insects for days uh so here one point to be noted is that b wordsworth he was a very good observant okay he was a very observant person and then the boy asks that what do you do mr so b wordsworth says that i am a poet and then he asks uh, are you a good poet so b wordsworth says that i am the greatest poet in the world so um, then the boy asks that what is your name so he says b wordsworth so the boy asks that uh, what does b stand for does it stand for bill so uh, b wordsworth says no uh, b stands for black and white wordsworth is my brother now uh, according to uh, some uh, references and uh, uh, as what i have researched uh, it is said that this white wordsworth is actually a reference for william wordsworth so um b wordsworth in this story he is trying to say that william wordsworth was his brother so this kind of highlights the greatness of b wordsworth that he is a great poet because he is the brother of william wordsworth and then the conversation continues b wordsworth says that uh, i can look at a simple flower like morning glory and i can cry he says the boy that he can just look at a flower and he can cry so the boy asks that why do you cry so b wordsworth says that i can cry because i am a poet and he says that poets can cry for everything and then he says that boy you will know this when you grow up because you too are a poet so he says the boy that you are also a poet and poets can cry for everything and then b wordsworth asks uh, the boy that do you like your mother so uh, the boy replies that i like her when she is not beating me and then uh, b wordsworth he took he takes out a, a printed paper printed sheet of paper and he says that this is the greatest poem for mothers and will you buy it i'll give you give uh, you this poem for 4 cents so the boy goes inside and he asks asks his mother that um, will you buy a poem for four cents so his mother denies and she denies very rudely because she was uh, obviously uh, she was kind of not liking she was not liking the uh, erratic behavior of b wordsworth uh, i mean the behavior was quite unusual he came to watch the bees and all so she said that just ask that blasted man to uh, get away from our house and she replied like that and then the boy comes out and he says to b wordsworth uh, that my mom she doesn't have four cents so she can't afford this poem uh, and then uh, b wordsworth says that oh this is poet's tragedy so this line is very important this is poet's tragedy means people are unable to understand a poet's work okay because poets whatever they write they write it out of their emotions okay and they are able to connect to it but until we are able to connect to it connect to their work we don't pay respect to it okay and uh, this is what is happening especially in today's world earlier poets writers and all sorts of artists they were respected a lot today art is replaced by money even artists they work for money so people don't uh, prefer art this much and people don't pay respect to art in today's world so this is what is the meaning of this line that this is poet's tragedy so it is showing 
the uh, the deteriorating respect for artwork okay the deteriorating respect for poets in the society then the boy asks that um, uh, do you really go on uh, you know do you really roam around like that to sell your uh, poetry to sell your poems isn't it funny to do that and he compares it with calypsonians he says that only calypsonians do that calypsonians means uh, west indian singers who sing songs on tropical theme so he says that only uh, calypsonians they sell their uh, tropical songs like that going around and selling so why do you do like that and have you really sold uh, some of the copies so how many have you sold so b wordsworth says that i haven't uh, sold a single copy yet uh, and then the boy asks that uh, do you really think i am a poet and then b wordsworth says that yes you are as good as me and on this note the conversation ends then comes their next meeting okay so a week later when uh, uh, the boy was returning from his school he uh, sees b wordsworth on the corner of mibul street and he was waiting for the boy and he offers the boy that uh, he has the best mango tree in the entire port of spain in his yard so he offers the boy to come to his house which was located in alberto street and taste these mangoes and there were actually three trees in b wordsworth's yard a mango tree coconut tree and a plum tree so uh, the boy agrees he goes uh, to b wordsworth's uh, house and to taste the mangoes and uh, he eats six mangoes and they were really juicy okay they were really very nice and then he returns his home so he was late and he had also stained all his uh, shirt with the juice of the mango so his mother got angry and she beat him with a whip she uh, beat the boy with a whip and uh, due to this beating the boy he got a little furious angry and uh, disheartened and disappointed and uh, so he runs from the home he runs away from his home and uh, obviously he goes to b wordsworth now why does he go to b wordsworth this is because um, the way b wordsworth uh, conversed with him um, that day also and a week prior also he was able to connect to b wordsworth right there was a kind of attachment between the boy and the uh, and b wordsworth so maybe uh, the boy he saw a fatherly figure in b wordsworth because there is no, uh, not a single mention of uh, the boy's father in the entire story so maybe the boy didn't have any father or anything like that and he might be seeing a fatherly figure in b wordsworth and so he left his home and he went to b wordsworth and when he went to b wordsworth uh, so they both lied on grass and b wordsworth uh, asked the boy to look up in the sky uh, look up uh, at the stars and he asked him that uh, can you think uh, how far these stars are okay how far these stars are and uh, when the boy he was looking at those stars he actually forgot all the beatings okay all his sorrows and he got a kind of comfort in the company of b wordsworth he was feeling a kind of comfort and he felt and he uh, felt very comfortable and he forgot all his sorrows okay so um, this particular instance where uh, the boy and b wordsworth are looking at the stars and boy is forgetting all his sorrows it points towards the minusculity of a human being it points towards the insignificance of um, you know of uh, one particular thing in life it tells us that a particular thing in life it doesn't carry that much importance because life has endless possibilities so rather than crying for something we should look at the other possibilities there are infinite possibilities so this is a very inferential uh, uh, paragraph we can say and then uh, the boy obviously he started feeling better then they started talking about constellations and all and meanwhile a policeman came 
and he flashed a light into their faces and he asked that what are you doing here so b wordsworth gives a reply that i am asking myself the same question for past 40 years so this is again a very philosophical reply a very philosophical line and it shows that b wordsworth was a very thoughtful person and he was searching for a meaning in his life he was searching for a purpose in his life uh, because this line uh, it stands for what am i doing here it means that what am i doing here on earth which means that b wordsworth has not yet discovered his purpose in life and he was kind of searching for a meaning in his life and maybe he has faced a lot of uh, difficulties in his life a lot of sufferings in his life and that is why he uh, he is asking himself a question that why am i here what am i doing here so this is again a very insightful line and uh, then uh, b wordsworth he says to the boy that uh, whatever happened today you you got to know that i have a mango tree palm uh, a plum tree and coconut tree so all this should be a secret and the boy gave him a word and on this note their conversation ends then again uh, next time when uh, when the boy he uh, goes to b wordsworth and he uh, sees that outside uh, the house of b wordsworth uh, in the yard there are a lot of bushes okay and it it is making the place very clumsy and very damp so he asks b wordsworth that uh, why don't you cut all these bushes okay it is making the place very damp uh, so uh, why don't you cut it so b wordsworth he replies in a very poetic way okay he gives the answer in the form of a story he says that uh, i'll tell you a story there is there was a girl poet and a boy poet okay and both of them they fell in love with each other and they married okay the girl she loved the nature okay she loved grass flowers and everything and boy he loved words and one day a uh, girl the girl poet he says to the boy poet that there is another poet coming in our family which means that she was giving birth to a boy or she was giving birth to a new baby but what happened uh, that the girl due to some reasons she died and the baby inside her also died and from then on that boy poet who was left alone he decided he sworn that uh, he will not touch anything in the girl's garden and that is why the bushes they grew high and wide so this is how b wordsworth replied to the boy's question so it is quite obvious that the boy poet in this story is b wordsworth himself okay and this is what uh, might have happened in b wordsworth life that his wife uh, uh, must have died and uh, that is what uh, might be depressing him that is what uh, might be making him sad and and you know that much uh, sad and and then the boy says that as p wordsworth was saying this story the boy could feel the story he could see the story on p wordsworth face he could see the face of b wordsworth growing older now this word older is not taken in literal sense but it means that uh, when one grows older uh, one gets more sufferings okay one gets more tensed he he gets weakness okay and how does a person grow old he grows old by experience so this line means that uh, he could see on b wordsworth face b wordsworth's face that he is saying the story from his experience and while he is saying the story he is suffering he is getting tensed he is kind of uh, feeling the story because this is the story of his real life this is what he has experienced and the boy could see that the boy could understand that and then the boy says that uh, b wordsworth he used to do everything as if he were doing it for the first time in his life and this is a very important theme in the story 
that he did everything as if he were doing it for the first time and he did everything as if he were doing a church ritual a church right okay and even even for the smallest of small things for example even if uh, we words were is offering uh, the boy uh, asking the boy if he wants to eat uh, ice cream okay then also if the boy says yes so uh, b wordsworth will think a lot about it and he will ask that which cafe should we patronize which cafe should we patronize so the word patronize means which cafe should we provide business to okay uh, means which cafe is in need of business okay so which cafe will be better to approach in terms of uh, um, homeliness also and in terms of providing business also so he thought a lot about small small things and he also enjoyed small small things in life so this is a very important lesson from this lesson that we must enjoy every small thing in life every trivial thing in life every silly thing in life because we need to search for happiness we need to discover happiness in everything in order to live happy otherwise life is full of sorrow and sadness so we need to enjoy little little things and this is what uh, b wordsworth is uh, b wordsworth's behavior is uh, giving a message okay and then the boy says that when he started incorporating this habit of enjoying every small thing then the earth became a most exciting place okay and then uh, one day again b wordsworth and boy they were just having a conversation and b wordsworth says that um, i'll tell you a secret okay you don't tell this to uh, anybody i'm going to tell you a secret and the boy got a little excited that what is the secret and b wordsworth says i am writing a poem and this was the secret for b wordsworth so the boy got disappointed he was like oh, it's not a secret because if if a person is a poet obviously he'll write a poem and then uh, b wordsworth says that i am writing the greatest poem in the world and then the boy he whistled and then b wordsworth says that he is working on this poem for last 5 years and it will take another 22 years for him to complete the poem okay so the boy he asks that oh my god then you write a lot because you are already writing it from past 5 years and it will take you 22 more years to complete the poem so you must be writing a very long poem so he says that no 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 i don't write much but i just write one line in a month and i make sure that that one line is a very good line okay and it kind of it includes my experience of the entire month then the boy asks that what was last month's good line so the poet uh, so b wordsworth he says uh, the past is deep this was the last month's line and uh, the boy was filled with wonder then again one day when b wordsworth and boy they were taking a walk and they came across a uh, a sea so the boy asks that uh, shall i drop this pin in the water so will it sink or will it float so b wordsworth replies that this is a strange world you drop the pin and then you see so according to b wordsworth we cannot predict anything in life okay he wants to say that this world is very strange we can't predict anything we can't expect anything and life will not uh, come as we as we expect it to come okay so we cannot expect anything so you drop it and see the result yourself and he drops the pin and it sinks and then the boy again asks b wordsworth that uh, how was your poem this month and b wordsworth didn't uh, say him any line that what he wrote this month and he just said it comes you know it comes okay means it comes naturally and uh, after that boy he never heard of the greatest poem in the world which means that after this day uh, b wordsworth he never talked about his poem and he never uh, told any other line of his poem and uh, one day uh, this boy he visits b wordsworth's uh, house and he sees that b wordsworth is looking very weak 
a very uh, he is suffering a lot and he was just uh, lying down on his bed in a corner and he was looking very uh, very sick and very uh, dismantled okay and uh, the boy went and he sat uh, beside b wordsworth and b wordsworth uh, he said that the poem is not going well okay and he was looking very pathetic so the boy he felt like crying because uh, he could see uh, b wordsworth in a very pathetic situation and that b wordsworth was in a lot of pain so he was feeling like crying and therefore b wordsworth he was not talking to the boy by looking at him he wasn't looking at the boy because whenever someone is in pain and uh, you look at him in pain and he looks at you then you you feel more pain for that person right so that is why b wordsworth was not looking at the boy and he was just uh, he turned his face towards the window and he was talking to the boy he said that uh, his poem is not going well and uh, and he also said that when he was 20 he felt the power within himself so this is again a very insightful line he says when i was 20 i felt the power within myself means when uh, b wordsworth was 20 at that time the world was different the society was different it was a different time people used to respect poets and their work but today there is no respect for poets and uh, for their work for example as we saw in the beginning of the story uh, the boy's mother also didn't buy the poem so people have lost the respect uh, for poets and poets uh, it is very difficult for poets to survive in today's world and this is what uh, b wordsworth is trying to convey and then the boy uh, could see b wordsworth's face growing older as b wordsworth was talking to the boy he could uh, see that b wordsworth is suffering more he is becoming more and more tense and he is about to die he could see death on the face of b wordsworth and uh, he felt a lot for b wordsworth he felt like crying because he was very much attached to b wordsworth and he could see death on his face then b wordsworth calls the boy and asks him to sit on his lap and um, and he says the boy that um, shall i tell you one funny thing uh, a funny story and promise me after uh, hearing this story you will never come to see me you will go to your home and you will never come back to see me okay and the boy he already started crying because he was feeling a lot of empathy and a lot of pain for b wordsworth and he was crying and he nodded so uh, b wordsworth he said he said that the funniest thing uh, the funniest story i'm going to tell you it is that that the story about the girl poet and the boy poet which i told you earlier it was not true it was false and also whatever i am telling you about the greatest poem in the world and that i am a great poet it is also all false isn't it the funniest thing in the world he asks the boy and the boy obviously he couldn't say anything and he was crying and he went home crying and he never came back after one year after one year when the boy he was passing by that street it is alberto street b wordsworth's house was located in alberto street so while he was passing by that street he saw that um, there is no sign of b wordsworth's house all the three trees the mango tree the plum tree and um, the coconut tree all of them uh, uh, all of these things they are not there and there is a two storied uh, building standing in front of that and it felt like b wordsworth never existed uh, never existed means the entire scenario has changed there is no sign of b wordsworth or his house so this is the end of the story now what is very different or unusual about the ending uh, this ending is very touching it is very moving and it is very important in fact the last line uh it seemed as if b wordsworth never existed this line is very important it conveys a very strong message it conveys the importance of time okay it uh, uh, underlines the fact that past is an illusion whatever 
we have to do and whatever makes sense what actually makes sense is the present living in the present moment the past uh, what, what has happened in past it is no longer uh, an event it is no longer a thing of importance in the present it is an illusion it is a mere illusion so uh, the last paragraph in the story it conveys the importance of time and uh, at one more place the importance of time uh, has been emphasized in the story when b wordsworth says that uh, i have been writing uh, the poem for past 5 years and i'll continue it for another 22 years in this uh, instance also importance of time has been uh, highlighted uh, this fact has been highlighted that quality comes with time the artistic fame okay the artistic fame the essence of uh, artist uh, artisticness it comes with time so this is the importance of time being highlighted and now comes the most important part of the story that was the uh, b wordsworth's story was it really not true according to me it was true and the reason why b wordsworth says that um, whatever i told you it was false it is because b wordsworth could see that the boy is empathizing with him and the boy is feeling pain for him and he didn't want the boy to suffer any more and that is why he says that whatever i told you it was all fake it was all not true but it was actually true because uh, um, b wordsworth uh, it was visible on b wordsworth's face as the boy himself said that whenever he told all these story uh, he was telling it out of experience he was growing older while he was saying that means he was actually going through that pain and suffering so it cannot be false it was true and uh, um, i think that the entire character of b wordsworth is a, a very um, we can say it's not easy to understand okay and there are a lot of lessons which b wordsworth has taught the boy okay one of the most important lessons which b wordsworth has taught the boy it is the power of observance the uh, the power of observing because uh, b wordsworth was very observant he could watch even the smallest of small things like insects bees and he could watch anything for a long period of time so the power of uh, observe observance this is uh, one lesson and another lesson is that he taught the boy how to enjoy the smallest of small things in life and then when he said the boy to look uh, look uh, at the stars and forget his grief so this is also an important lesson that human beings they form a very minuscule part of this planet a very minuscule part of this universe and we should not cry about every small thing because uh, as we say that when one door closes a new door opens so there are endless possibilities in life and rather than uh, thinking about one small thing we should look uh, forward to uh, other possibilities so these are three most important lessons and then another lessons as i told you uh, is the importance of time and uh, one more lesson which uh, i feel it can be there that when b wordsworth in the end he says that Uh, whatever i told you i made it up so he is also trying to teach this thing to the boy that you should not believe everyone and everything at once whatever every person is saying you you should not believe it at once okay so all these are the important points uh, of the story and uh, yeah and the main theme in the story we can say it is the pain of a poet the pain of an artist and uh, and uh, the power of observation and all these things with this i hope i have made this lesson very clear to you you can prove this by liking and commenting on the video and for more such videos stay tuned to our channel by pressing the bell icon bye take care see you in the next video